What's up friends? So a little while ago we came back from a African safari 12 days in Kenya and Tanzania. I haven't seen the video we made from that trip yet. I'm gonna leave links down below. You can go check out. Uh, it's a really cool one all about animals in East Africa and the Great Migration. Today I thought we would do kind of a little unpack with me slash what I packed on our safari trip. So we went to Kenya and Tanzania, but this would be applicable to, I would say a good chunk of other safaris in Africa as well. And if so, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give that a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button for more travel advice and adventures. As you can imagine, if you were doing a safari, you were gonna be in a vehicle. And a lot of times the vehicles that you use are gonna be the same ones that like transport you and your luggage to and from your accommodations. The type of bag that you wanna pack is a duffel bag or a backpack. So a soft side, like it, it's gotta be a soft bag. Having a rolly bag is really not ideal for safaris since good chunk of the time you might be going from your uh, vehicle to your accommodation and you'll be walking on sand or dirt or rocks. So you can't really wheel your bags, you're most likely gonna be having to carry them and wheelie bags when you're carrying them, it's just really awkward and no one really likes that. Another thing is you might have a weight limit. We had 15 kilograms, so it's about 33 pounds for our main bag. That being said, 15 kilograms is quite a lot. Like we fit all our safari and our Kilimanjaro stuff in the same bag and we were still, well, we were right at the weight limit. So I'm pretty sure you'll be able to fit what you need in 15 kilograms, but. Now, when it comes to day bags, you have a couple different options. If you are bringing a camera, which I will get into, and you definitely should, you're gonna wanna make sure you protect it. <laughs> the vehicles that you ride in are very, very bumpy. These are not paved roads for the majority of the time that you are gonna be driving, like 95% of the time, they're not gonna be paved. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure any camera gear that you bring is very, very protected and padded. You don't really need to pack like a super big day bag, just kind of some of your essentials, like some water, some snacks, maybe um, your passport, uh, any other sunglasses, you know, usual day bag stuff, but just make sure it's padded. Um, if you don't, if you're not bringing a big expensive camera and you just have your phone, then just a little side satchel works great. That'll also work, no problem. Now, if you're like us and you have a lot of camera gear, you might have laptops, a bunch of extra carry-on things that you want with you in your safari vehicle, then you can bring a bigger backpack. Like I mentioned, make sure your gear is padded because it will most likely be placed in the vehicle floor or on the side and it's, it's very bumpy in these vehicles. So it's gonna get knocked around quite a bit. And I would not recommend bringing any light colored bags because the floor of the vehicle is gonna get quite dirty because you're gonna be standing up and down and up and down and up and down to look at animals. While we're on the topic of cameras, let's talk about cameras. You're definitely gonna want as big a, a zoom lens as you possibly can. So we actually borrowed a lens from Sony. It was their 100 to 400 G Master and oh, made taking photos of animals that much easier because while you can get pretty close to them in the vehicles and sometimes you get really lucky and they're just like sleeping beside the road, sometimes you just want, they're just like right there and you just, just need that little extra bit of zoom. Of course, if all you have is a point and shoot, that's perfectly fine. Even a cell phone is fine because a good chunk of people only brought their cell phone. So the reason your cell phone's probably fine is because, well, you can pack some binoculars. Binoculars are 100% a essential item for any safari, regardless of what camera you have. If you have binoculars, then you can at least see the animals. Even if you can't take a photo that close of them, you can see them up at close. So most people, they didn't have a big camera, they at least had binoculars. I'm pretty sure everyone had binoculars. Little travel hack for you. If all you have is a cell phone and a pair of binoculars, all you gotta do is hold up the cell phone to the eyepiece. So hold the camera up to the eyepiece of the binoculars and um, you can open your camera up. And with a little maneuvering, this is, this is a little bit of a skill 
required with this because it's uh, it's not perfect. You only have a small little window. You can actually take a zoomed in photo through the binoculars and it kind of looks like this. So it's better than nothing, right? At least you got an option there. So all the clothes that I packed was for a 12 day safari, knowing that there would be options to get washing done at at least a couple of the places we were staying. We did a 12 day safari in January, which was, or I would say mid January to end of January, which was considered the dry season in Kenya and Tanzania. Although we had quite a bit of rain, but that's kind of where we were. And th these are the clothing that we packed for that. Now, that being said, you're in the vehicle most of the time you're in a safari. So even if it is raining, you're kind of covered and protected. You just might want a slightly different pair of shoes. And as well as you kind of need to pack for everything because when you're doing morning safaris, as you find out, it's going to be cold. If you're doing evening ones, it's going to be chillier as well. During the day, the sun's out. You kind of want like, a variety of everything. So I packed two pairs of shorts. One was a little jean short, another was these like green khaki shorts, uh, as well as four different short sleeve tops. So I have one t-shirt, just like that, and then a couple of kind of like sleeveless shirts that look really, really good. Uh, these were awesome for mixing and matching with the pair of shorts for like a daytime outfit. They looked really cute on and I was pretty happy. The next thing that I packed was a one little romper. Um, I thought it would be fun to have a nice romper and it turned out really adorable in photos. Uh, not always the most practical. I wore these when we kind of were like, when we had most of the things that we were doing was in the middle of the day, not in the morning or in the evening because I couldn't really put like pants over top. I could put like a sweater over top, but it's more of like a good day outfit. Next, I had a light long sleeve shirt. So this was so amazing. I wore this quite a lot because sometimes in the mornings it would just be a little bit nippy as mornings sometimes are. So I didn't really want to just be in my t-shirt or like my short sleeve shirt for the day. So I put this on and it was really lightweight. So it worked very well. I highly recommend a lightweight long sleeve shirt. Then I also packed one long pair of pants for chillier mornings, like when we went hot air ballooning at like 4 a.m. You're gonna want some pants. Also, because we were getting out of the vehicle in the hot air balloon, you needed to cover your legs because if you're walking in tall grass, you know what you normally find in tall grass? Ticks. Speaking of keeping ourselves warm, this sweater was my favorite sweater to wear on my African safaris because it was very warm, it zipped up so I could take it off as soon as it started warming up. And it was just all around a very versatile sweater. I wore it in the evenings, I wore it in the mornings, I wore it a lot because it cooled off quite quickly when we were staying in Africa. Now, if you noticed, all of the clothes that I showed you were very neutral colors, khakis, earth tones, that being because, well, I originally, I thought that's what you're supposed to wear at safari. And the idea behind that was it was supposed to not scare the animals away because like bright reds or other unnatural colors might scare the animals away. I learned that it doesn't really matter because you're in a big vehicle that's loud and it moves and you're inside it. And so it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like the animals are not gonna run away from your red colored shirt. So if you really wanna wear bright red on your safari, do it. However, there is one instance that you do want to avoid certain colors and those colors would be blacks and blues, dark blues. That's because of the tsetse fly, a very annoying pest that they have in Tanzania. We didn't run into it in Kenya, but in Tanzania we ran into it in a couple spots and tsetse flies bite. No one really wants to be bitten by any bug, but you really don't want to get bitten by these flies because they carry a parasite. Some of them, some of them carry a parasite that when they bite you causes a disease that leads to called African sleeping sickness. And it's 
not very good. Now the areas we were in don't, the bug, the tizzy flies there don't really carry it, but other areas that you could be venturing in could carry it. I would read out more uh, about the flies if there is if there are concern on the safari that you're going to be going on. These were just my outfits that I wore when I slept. The biggest thing to note is that you're going to be sleeping in a variety of temperatures. If you are like doing any kind of glamping or camping or tenting on your safaris, so pack warm clothes. I packed warm fleecy pants and another long sleeve shirt because I get quite cold at night and when you're not, like when you're sleeping in a tent, even if it's a luxurious tent, they're not insulated, so. But also have like t-shirts to sleep in because it can get quite hot if you're not in a tent. Rain jackets, this was very important. Uh, I feel like we didn't really, I didn't really, I think I only wore my rain jacket once, but if we were traveling in the rainy season, we could wear it quite a bit, you never know. Always bring a rain jacket. A lovely safari hat. I loved having a hat. As annoying as this exact one was, because I can't really pack it, so I had to carry it with me, it was rather enjoyable to wear. Also, it protects my head from, like, sun. Yeah, generally, a wide-brimmed hat with a neck strap, as you see in many other safari photos, is the recommended hat, because it can get a little windy, a little breezy on the, on the vehicle, but, if you know hats stay on your head okay, then you'll be fine without a strap. So I brought two pairs of shoes with me, one pair of sandals and one pair of trainers. This was a big debate for me when we were going into the safari of what shoes I wanted to bring because I really wanted to bring like a cute pair of combat boots. But I'm very glad I actually brought these trainers because most of the time it was pretty warm when I was wearing these shoes and if I wore like pair of like Timberlands or my Roots boots, my feet would be pretty sweaty. Also, when you're in the vehicles, at least the vehicles we were in, you're allowed to kind of stand on the seats with some of them, but you have to take your shoes off. So having a shoe that you can kind of like easily slip on and off was very helpful. Um, a slightly better option than these trainers, because they are like mesh here, would have been a light hiking shoe, sort of like a trip. Not quite like a trail runner, but a light hiking shoe, I feel like would have been more of a perfected option. But these were kind of all that I had, so I went with them. Another very, very important thing to note though, if you're bringing any shoes, any footwear with white soles, they're not gonna be white when you leave Africa. They're gonna be red, at least mine are and everybody else's white shoes <laughs> that were in many other safaris are very red because the soil is red. So if you encounter any kind of mud, they're gonna stain your shoes red. And this was after washing and scrubbing. A pair of sunglasses to protect your eyes from the sun. A battery pack for extra battery. I'd also recommend getting a pretty big battery pack because sometimes some of the accommodations that you can stay at might not necessarily have power 24 seven, because they could be running off a generator, especially if they're more remote, which is the case with a couple of our accommodations. So at least you have the option to charge up your phones, cameras, etc., from the battery pack if you can't plug into the walls, as well as I recommend bringing adapters, whatever else you need. Water bottles. Now, this is the water bottle that we brought on our safari, which I would not recommend this one, it's just we were going on Kilimanjaro right after, so um, we needed a, a sturdy one. However though, the wide mouthpiece here made it <laughs> very tricky to drink when we were in a in our vehicles because the vehicles were shaking, so it just, it's very messy, it just got water everywhere. Would not recommend. I would, however, recommend something more like this that has a smaller mouthpiece much more practical for drinking in a vehicle, as well as, let me show you how this is cool. Um, it can or cannot have a filter. This is really up to you and it depends on where you're staying. All of the places that we had refilled water jugs, so a lot of the accommodations would have just big water jugs that you could refill your water bottle with. Um, so those were all filtered. They were all clean drinking water. You don't really need a filter, but if you weren't necessarily staying in accommodations with that or you're just feeling a little bit, you know, 
uneasy about the water situation, you can get yourself a water bottle that has like these really good bacterial viral filters. Life Straw is one of the brands that we've used many times before. I don't know if this one is specifically Life Straw, but you can Google them. Any outdoor store will have them and that will filter like 99.9% .9 of all the bad stuff out of your water. Another nice thing is you can get collapsible water bottles. So this folds up like that. Isn't that amazing? Like it's tiny. Let me just put my water bottle back together. Sunscreen and bug spray, two very essential items. Hand sanitizer and like wet wipes. These are very important just for cleaning your hands. Like a lot, some of the times we were doing picnics, so we'd be like on safari all day and then we do picnics and, and sometimes there's washrooms, other times not. It's just always a good thing to kind of have a little bit of hand sanitizer and the wet wipes specifically because they kind of cleaned your hands a bit more. And then on our, at least on our trips, cash and specifically US dollars, Kenya and Tanzania, they preferred US dollars to their own local currency, although they still accepted their own local currency. It's just good to have cash on hand and small bills. Like when you go to the bank and they give you like hundreds, ask them for smaller bills because they will, it was very, very difficult to break hundreds, fifties, even twenties when we were staying at these lodges or dealing with local vendors. Like if you're buying souvenirs, they're not really gonna have change for a hundred US dollars or even to give you that much change back in their local currency. So small bills in cash and your own first aid kit. Most likely any of the tour providers, the guides, the hotels, anywhere you're staying will have first aid kits, but it's always a good idea to have your own personal kit with you for, you know, emergencies and that sort of jazz. Um, so that's pretty much everything that I'm gonna cover in this packing video. And now there are several things that I did leave out such as a power adapters. Now the countries we went to, we needed a UK adapter, but it could be different depending on the countries that you're going to. So pack accordingly, as well as all my toiletries, but cause I did a video just recently about what I packed. So you can go watch that links down below there. I'll also leave it in the card as well as all of the day bag carry on things like passports, my phone cables, but these are typically things that I'd bring on any trip. So not safari specific. If you are interested in seeing an updated packing guide on that, I can do it like a day bag slash carry on as well as if you've been on a safari and you think there was anything missing here that was super helpful for you when you went on safari, let me know down below and um, they'll help other people as well. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys later. Bye.